management or other advertisers. This is contacttalkradio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on tunein.com, hang.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn to awaken your divine intuition and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, which would be me. Uh, For those of you listening live, we are also uh, streaming live on Facebook. You can go to Facebook, Sarah Wiseman 33 or Contact Talk Radio Network and find us there. For those of you who are listening on audio live, great. And those of you listening after, welcome. So happy to be with you. Today, uh, our subject for the show is what transit are you in? And we're going to talk not about astrological transits, and I'm going to explain why in just a moment, but we're going to talk about lifetime transits or the transits that uh, a soul, uh, at least the transits that in this modern time that we're encompassing right now in the last hundred years, the transits that we as souls are going through in a human lifetime, you know, depending on how long we live and and to some extent, maybe where we live, but on the whole, some pretty universal transits that we have going on. I want to also invite you to call into free readings Tuesday, and you can call in from 844-390-8255-844. Three nine zero eight two five five, and um, go ahead and call in and I'm happy to talk to you about whatever is going on in your life from a spiritual and intuitive perspective. I'm not the oracle. I really, I really uh, want, want to completely disengage from any idea that I'm telling you what to do or I know what we're doing in Free Readings Tuesday is looking at how do we look at this from a soul perspective? And to some extent, how I will use intuitive uh, abilities to kind of like look at the flavor of what's going on or look at where if you stay here, where that's going to lead. But the main thing is, where are you in terms of the soul lessons you're learning? That's what we like to look at uh, in terms of how we're running Free Readings Tuesdays. So let me just talk a little bit um, about this idea of transits, and I see we've got a couple callers waiting, so we'll get to them in just a moment. So astrological transits, the planets are spinning around at all times, and it's very um, useful to know where your planets are, uh, how they correspond to your chart, and what's happening now. That can really give you a jump start or a head start on understanding the things that are happening in your life. So that is one practice and one study, and it's fantastic. So we look at the the astrological transits in a lifetime. But the other thing to remember is that as a soul, you've been here lots of lifetimes. You've been on earth lots of lifetimes. So It's probably unlikely, I guess we don't really know, but it's probably unlikely that you've inhabited the exact same birth chart every single lifetime, right? So maybe this lifetime, I'm like mostly Aquarius. Could you guess this? But then maybe past life, I was a Capricorn or uh, maybe past life, I was an Aries and you same. So we look at the the astrological transits going on now, but we remember that we've had hundreds, thousands, so many lifetimes in this, on this planet as a human. Some of us may have had other lifetimes on different planets. Then we've got the idea of multidimensionality. So 
perhaps here I am doing this radio now, and then in another dimension, um, I'm doing a different radio show uh, at the same time. So we start to look at the planets as something that continually accompanies us. It's good to pay attention, uh, but this is something that continually accompanies us anytime we're on a planet in a lifetime. So the transits that I'm talking about are as we're born into a human lifetime in basically modern culture, last hundred years, what are the transits or the big soul lesson understandings that we will go through? And it's important to understand that at each age, you come across different transits. Now, um, I think it was Gail Leahy a long time ago wrote that book, Passages, and basically, um, I don't recall the book exactly, but it, it, it brought light to the idea of the midlife crisis in the 40s. I'm not sure if she was the only one, but I know that that was around circulating in that time, Passages, oh, the midlife in the 40s. And this helped people understand that in the 40s, we are going to reach some very interesting things that we're looking at as a whole, as a soul collective, we're going to move through these transits. So the transits that I pay attention to are childhood, adolescence, and young adulthood. And so here we are really dependent on either a family, or if we don't have a family, we're most likely dependent on some kind of structure, or perhaps we're on our own. But this time frame of childhood, adolescent, young adulthood, um, we talk about this as being our core self, knowing our core abilities, and beginning to explore these, but in a, in a very protected small container. We're not out, most of us are not out in the real world yet. Some of us are, but on the most part, we're we're sheltered, protected, uh, we're not adults, we're not considered parts of society that have to be responsible for ourselves. We, it is expected that someone will take responsibility for us and hopefully that happens. But then as we enter these different stages of adulthood, things start to get interesting. And what I've been noticing in working with clients, and I'm kind of just looking at my cheat sheet here, is like we go through our 20s, 30s, 40s, and that's sort of, uh, I would call the 20s as the first rebellion. We break away from the parent, the school. Maybe we enter a job, but uh, we have that first rebellion of, I'm free. <laughs> I'm an adult. I get to decide for myself. And so um, this takes shape as rebelling against what was known and trying to figure out who we are. In the 30s, we have this stage, um, you might call it, depending on where you are, it could be either fast and furious where everything's going so fast. Maybe you're with a partner, maybe you have kids, maybe you've got some career thing, maybe you're traveling, um, or maybe it's fast and furious, but maybe it's also, you might call it reality check. You're no longer in the first rebellion. You're entering the world and you've got to support yourself. You've got to be responsible for those around you, partner, self, kids, if you have them. It's this time of, there's no time left to rebel. You have to move on with that in order to uh, make your way. And then in the 40s, um, I thought about calling this the second rebellion, but it's actually the first questioning. And I don't think that it's about having a midlife crisis anymore. It's not, we're no longer in the time where people would go get the red sports car or um, the first questioning, you look at, okay, I've been an adult for 20 years. Who am I? What am I doing? What is my life about? And that's why we see people changing jobs, getting divorced, uncoupling and so forth, moving the first questioning and what I've noticed in working with people is this is where the first big spiritual awakening usually happens. We blast open because we're in the state of first questioning, what, who am I, what's going on, universe, help me figure it out. Then we go to a couple other stages, 50s, 60s, and 70s, 
the 50s are about finding our groove we know what we like we know what we don't like at least we sort of think think we do and a lot of people are pretty established in their work maybe they're established in being in partnership or not being in partnership and so 50s are about finding a groove with what you learned in your 40s and then we go to the 60s which is a really interesting stage and that's about life it's about review and releasing so we're reviewing our lives up to this time frame and we are under pressure to release everything we didn't like about our lives everything that was traumatic everything that was a bad memory and so forth we review and we release and what this is is the pre life review or the first life review, depending on how long we're going to live. We're taking a look and we're ass assessing all that's happening and deciding. I want to keep going with that I want to release all this past no longer no longer important to me living in the now. In the 70s. Uh, there's sort of two sides of the coin and you get to choose depending on how much work you've done previously there's either um, the two sides of the uh, co the coin are suffering or enjoyment that's where you are you're either filled with regrets or you're so grateful going forward and then the 80s and beyond um, I was going to call this life review but actually it's it's sort of this the third rebellion it's a third rebellion <laughs> like I'm going to do what I want uh, none of these structures apply I'm no longer having to be responsible for people I'm no longer having to show up to um, work or career I'm getting to be exactly who I set out to be and uh, this can be a, a, an amazing interesting time for those of us who are going to make it to the 80s and beyond um, so as you take your place in looking at what transit you're in, uh, the soul lessons come uh, associated with those main categories. I'm going to be teaching about this quite a bit more as I'm so, it's sort of a project I'm working on. So anyway, if you're interested, uh, you know, email me, let me know what questions you have about this idea of transits. Okay, we're going to go to free readings Tuesday, I do invite you to call in to 844 three nine zero eight two five five eight four four three nine zero eight two five five and it looks like we have debbie calling from canada debbie thanks for your patience hi sarah thank you for taking my call yes um, i've been listening to your show for some time now and i just had never got it lined up to be able to actually phone in so nice. i'm really excited great yeah so I was just listening to what you were talking about. And I found that when I was in my early 20s, um, of course, I was searching um, for where I should be, what I should be doing, um, trying to understand uh, my intuition and everything like that at that time. Um, 40s were definitely exciting responsibilities set in. And, you know, right now I am not quite at my 60s I'm, I'm at 57 but I'm finding that I'm starting to question um, what I can release what I need um, how I can tune in better to my Claire's at the age that I am right now and but my life has gotten so unmanageable it's just been crazy and of course, I just continue to keep going forward, hoping that that's all going to change and settle down. Um, do you have any advice that might help me out? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, um, so I kind of I sort of take notes on what you said, and then I sort of try and answer the easiest things first. So um, in terms of your psychic abilities and the Claire's uh, as long as you're practicing at some level like a daily practice so that that muscle is getting used, this will be a time actually. Um, through through your 60s and 70s when this will deepen radically so. At some level you're at that place of wisdom where 
what you're going to receive from the guides or from psychic practices is going to make a lot more sense to you. It's like you're sort of coming into your own there. So the key is to create the daily practice. And then it's kind of like being blown away by what happens in a given meditation or a given session with the guides. It just keeps pouring in. So that part, you can sort of rest assured as long as you set the time aside, it's going to happen beautifully. Um, it is really true Thanks. that, yeah, it's really true that kind of plugging along, hoping things are going to get better. That is not a system that will work at this age that you're the, at this age of the sixties, which is about review and release. So you will be asked to release a huge amount of past trauma, past wounding, and also current trauma and current wounding, whatever those situations or relationships are. Um, what comes to mind when you think of like what you still deal with that's painful every day or sticky every day that you just kind of think, wow, if I could just be free of this, what, where does that for you? Uh, well, I think that would be in two different areas. One would be um, being financially stable would be huge. It would be a real stress reliever, of course. The other thing is that I am um, looking after um, a husband who has kidney failure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a little hard. Um, and, I, and I still work full time. So it does keep me pretty busy and I'm just kind of hoping that things will settle down a little. Who else? Um, so those are probably things um, your husband is an ongoing situation that is going to be like a primary responsibility. What are things that can be, what other things are you in charge of or responsible for in terms of other family members or other kinds of things where it's you holding everything up? Well, my mom passed on a while back. So to some degree, um, you know, helping out with um, my dad, um, I'm not physically in the same town as him. So it's very hard to try and keep him in a positive um, state, mental state. Mm -hmm especially with COVID because he lives alone now. Um, but yeah, that's probably about it though. And what do you do for your work? How involved is that? Very. Yeah, it's, it's very involved. <laughs> what kind of field is it in? It's in finance. Oh, okay. Um, and are you the only sibling to your dad? No, I do have a brother. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you've got this big tangled ball, you know, we just want to take, we want to pull the string that we can see and then allow things to relax from there. So, or to untangle from there. So what I'm seeing is just a shedding of as much what you might see now as that's my job too, my dad, my husband, my work, but to start to shed some of the, the, the outer layers of that. So with your dad, you allow yourself to have a breather and you give that over to your sibling for a while. You just like, I'm gonna take a month. And so it doesn't solve the problem permanently, but you begin to have that relaxation or that um, you allow something to shift. You, nothing's happening right now. You're stuck. Um, but if you untangle that one little piece, I'm going to let my brother or my sibling deal with my dad for one month, then that's relaxed and the universe can bring something else. Um, you may be able to find some different systems for your husband, such as some other care help. And then unfortunately, um, the biggest thing I'm seeing is, is your work, uh, there you sort of piled on doing everybody's 
jobs sort of uh, how do you feel about, about like you're you're doing way more work than lots of people working there are what do you think about that well <laughs> of course i wouldn't be that happy about that um it is something that i've been aware of um and so basically i just never feel like i'm caught up which yeah and I continue to get more things added to the to the situations and the responsibilities that I have here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, so in, in, I just want to say, like, looking, in work, I'm seeing people at your similar uh, position or pay, and they're doing like half as much as you and getting the same rewards. Yeah. It's it's um, and it's not necessarily like it's a gender thing. It's just people are deciding to sort of do less and that's the standard for them. Um, so what we're looking at is some boundaries, some, some very big saying no's. And the benefit is that every time you say no, every time you refuse a task, every time you rid yourself of a task, um, it creates this space so that maybe you're still dealing with the care of your husband and you're still working, but some suddenly there's all this space in your life that you didn't have before. Um, I'm trying to think, I have a course, uh, I think it's called the Self Love Project on my website. Uh, that might be useful to you because it feels like you've absorbed a lot of misbeliefs that only you can do it or... Um, only you are supposed to do it and that's where the boundary is like nope can't do that nope can't do that nope you're gonna have to do that sorry i'm too busy um these phrases that don't come very easily to you are the phrases that are being required for now in order to get out of this entanglement just sort of sit with that and maybe check that course out i think that might help you see where the misbeliefs came from about you being the responsible one and I think that may be useful to you. Uh, right. Just, just yeah, a few, yeah. So, just a few small changes in this. Just a few saying no's. It's going to open up things and allow a lot of a lot of big changes to happen. So, go ahead and do them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would worry me a little bit, though, because I consider. Uh, well, I just think that they expect me to be able to be doing everything that they're asking of me for my job, right? And it's not that the pay is that great. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, I think it's time to really, to really, really look and say, you know, uh, yeah, just to really look at it and say, why is my value less than someone else's? That's not the case. So uh, find a different job, get your job re-figured out, get a raise, all these things. Uh, stop being the victim of, um, being unhappy and letting other people give you the junk work and uh, start taking charge. And you'll be kind of shocked. Um, they're just going to agree. They're going to be like, okay, sure. And uh, then that'll be one thing. Your dad seems impossible to just, you're not abandoning him. You're taking a month long breather. It's a whole different story, but that's going to give you that space. Anyway, Debbie, I think you know what to do. The thing will be to have the courage to do it. And I think you can find that also. And once you see the changes that happen, you'll be super happy about it. So thank you for calling into the show. And I'm going to, I'm going to let you go now because we've got some other people that I think are going to be calling. So thanks. Thank thanks. you so much. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah. So um, lines are, are open. Uh, we, you can call in to 844 three nine zero eight two five five eight four four three nine zero eight two five five lines are open you know debbie is a perfect example she said she was 57 and a lot of people in their 50s and 60s are in that sandwich generation where they're taking care of kids and taking care of parents she had the added condition of taking care of her husband but something happens where uh, we think we have to it's like this inverted triangle and we're at the bottom holding everybody up right and if you're noticing this in your life you're the the what is that the kingpin the linchpin i can't remember what 
this, but if you're at the bottom of that triangle holding everything up, this is not a good thing. This is uh, based on some kind of misbeliefs you absorbed as a kid that you have to be responsible, you have to take care of it, um, it's your duty to help others, you're, you must uh, be nice to people, um, and so forth. It's the classic women's training of uh, these generations. So if this is where you find yourself, it is time to step back and start shedding tasks. And I find it's easiest to shed the small things first and start giving responsibility back to the people that you've been supporting. Now, um, codependency is a term thrown around a lot. It may be codependent, or it may be just that you got in the habit of doing everything for your family when your kids were younger and now they're adults and like you're still doing their stuff. This is time to shed those responsibilities and create that space for you and for you I mean for your not just for so you can watch more movies <laughs> it's for your soul work because that's what we're really here for to connect to the divine and to begin to transcend um, personality and move from soul perspective okay looks like we have on hold we have Nicole welcome Nicole Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm yes, this is yes. very exciting. <laughs> Great. What's up? What can I help you with? So, so it's funny because the, the person before me, um, I, it's kind of about uh, around the same question that I have is just basically, I started this awakening about a year and a half ago, and it's coming at me very quickly. Um, like this revelation after revelation and all these things I'm supposed to be releasing. Um, like I had one just the other night where, you know, it's basically the universe showed me things that were happening to me that I needed to let go or to stand my ground, use my voice, speak my truth, um, which I have not been doing. Um, I am, I guess I, I came from a very abusive relationship about 10 years ago. So I'm still in that mindset with my new husband and have a hard time speaking up for myself and saying what I mean. And so all of these things are coming up, but I feel like they're happening for a reason. Like I'm supposed to be doing, I'm supposed to be doing something um, with this awakening and with this spirituality. Um, and I just don't know what it is. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm probably reading 20 different books right now. It's like, I keep getting steered in different directions and I just, I'm not lost. I don't feel like I'm stuck because things are still progressing. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time meditating. Um, I, I meditate, but then I just feel like nothing happens. Um, I do aura bath, but then sometimes I feel like I get revelations during that. And I just, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something big and I don't know what it is. Like I can feel it. Like it's, mm -hmm. I can't explain it, but yeah, no, I'm I get just it. wanting to see what you saw as far as where I'm supposed to be going down the road with mm -hmm. everything that's happening. I have a couple questions. How old are you? Uh, 45. Okay. I was going to think you were 47, but that's pretty, that's what I was thinking. And um, what do you do for your work now? I work in IT. I work on um, uh, support for the providers um, at a hospital. I okay. work on their applications. And what's your experience in like, um, not so much public speaking, but like um, speaking in meetings or speaking with groups or. So I'm, I'm also yeah. a trainer. I, uh, okay. I train the doctors on the applications that they use at the hospital. Okay. Okay. That's the piece. Okay. So um, I would suggest that. Uh, give me just a second. Um, so a couple of things are happening right now, astrologically at the, the time of this show, we're about to go direct in all these planets that have been um, retrograde. I think it's October 18th. So that's just a couple more weeks. And we're going to feel this whoosh sort of as all of that, those planets uh, that have been sort of stuck go direct all at the same time. So I think there is some immediate relief in a couple weeks, but the bigger thing is you um, are going to use your training self 
your ability to take a concept and explain it very clearly in a step-by-step -step way. And this is going to be about how do you, all these things, all this um, impersonal empowerment, which is what you've been going through, how to get from PTSD, from abuse to personal empowerment. How do you do that? And you're going to be teaching and offering that to others who are walking the path. Um, and so this might not sound that interesting to you yet. Um, but what there's, what the guys are saying is, um, this particular help will be more useful than a million aura baths. I, I don't want to be specific to that. I don't actually know what an aura bath is, but, um, it may not be as fluffy or as, um, uh, I don't know, uh, sort of this celebrity spirituality that you were hoping for, but the actual practice of working with people and taking them through from trauma to freedom is incredibly okay. powerful. And, and you're learning your path now. So, um, I think I would probably drop the amount of books you're reading and drop the different okay. kind of practices and really kind of get a handle on you are able to meditate um, and you are able to do this work with the guides and angels. And so allowing yourself to just drop the distract, like it's much easier to read a book than to sit and meditate. It's like they do the, the book does sure. the work for you, or it's so much easier to listen to a podcast or listen to like a, a relaxation app or something, just like, no, <laughs> this is you in the universe, no techno technology in between. Okay. And it's you with your practice. Okay. So um, I think I would begin by asking the guides, um, what left of my healing needs, what's left in my healing? What part of the, okay. the P PTSD, what part of the wound hasn't been resolved yet? Because you might think, oh, I'm pretty good. And then the universe shows you like, wow, you have 90% left. And so the journey is, right. <laughs> how do you walk through that? Figure it out, because you will. And then how do you pass that on to other people? How to, how to do the process. So this is where there's no mistake why you're, tr you're a trainer, right? The universe has already set you up. Like, we're going to show her how to be a trainer. So after she's mastered this he personal healing, she's going to be able to show other people how to do it. Does that make sense to you? It does. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, so as, as, well, as far as like working, like I'm starting to feel like different energies and stuff. So I didn't know if that had something to do with what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, like I can feel energy around me. If, you know, I can feel mm -hmm. the change of energy. Like when I'm sleeping, I can feel different uh, vibrations that different energies and I didn't know yeah. if that had something to do with it well I think as part of your opening a lot of different things are going to happen and like the more you meditate the more you're going to feel energy and receive visions and um your dreams are going to get a lot more intense you're going to have direct knowing like all this psychic stuff is going to open but um um, the core of what you're doing is teaching people how to move through trauma into, into freedom again. So whether you use all that or you do it in a more practical way, I have kind of imagined they're going to be combined, but, um, so I think the things that I would okay. suggest is, uh, I have a course, maybe you've taken it even already, but the guides and angels project, I would get that it's on the website yes. and I would just work okay. with that like every single day and kind of like relax the other systems. And then um, I do think there's quite a bit of work still around your, uh, your current relationship where the, the triggers and the traumas are still needing to be this idea that a, a woman and a man are of equal or any gender, but, just like in a marriage of a woman and a man, both parties have equal value and making sure that that is 
how you approach your life, because as women, we're taught that that's not the case, which is completely incorrect. Um, just working from that perspective, sort of like the previous call. And that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's exactly what's coming up is that there's, I got the revelation or the impression or the vision that my voice is just as important as his, but yet yes. I don't let it. I don't know if it's him who is, you know, saying, you know, when I ask him something, if I, you know, say I want to do something he's like, no. And I kind of just leave it alone where I, because I, before that's how it used to be. So now I'm right. just trying to figure out how to stand up for myself, but without, without the fear of, of fighting or, you know, retaliation or anything like that. So I think it's just a fear-based thing of being able to speak up for myself. So that's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to take some work. Um, you standing up for yourself as an independent person as and as a a unique soul with just as much value as anyone else and just uh, the idea is that he he is operating operating under a lot of old structure and old ideas and of course as we all know that's all crashing down um it'd be great right. if he were to educate himself about what's actually happening in the world now um Right. Because a lot of it is, it's just like opening up to like, oh, he probably doesn't even like that role either. You know, it's just uh, right. opening up to some new ideas of how people can be equal and how there can be room for different views in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, thank you. Yeah. You know, I would use the next 10 years as learning everything. And then after that, you start to you start to really contribute and bring it back to others. Maybe not quite 10 years before that happens, but there's a lot of just learning, which is wonderful. That's what we're here for. So thank you, Nicole. Thanks for okay. calling in. Yeah. No, thank thank you. you. I really appreciate it, Sarah. Thank yeah, you. Sure. So uh, yeah, we're, we're in such, I kind of feel sorry. Well, I do. No, I don't feel sorry for women are not just women, but we are in this state where Things have changed. The old structures are falling. And one of the big pieces of structure that's falling is this idea that the man's in charge or um, a certain race is in charge or, or a certain wealth structure is in charge. This is all dropping away. And so we're finding it on the bigger stage in the world slowly. Uh, and we're also finding it on the smaller stage in our own relationships. So it would not be surprising at all if you're in your own family, your own relationships, your what was what used to be okay. Uh, one person running the show and the other person saying, okay, that's no longer okay. And that's because we are consciously, collectively approaching a new understanding. No person is in charge of another. It's just how it is. We do have free readings Tuesday. We lines are open. You can call into 844-390-8255, 844-390-8255. Lines are open. Um, so interesting, you know, um, I don't know how to explain it, but somehow we all locked into this belief system of, of this idea of a dominant culture or mainstream culture and the idea that one group was higher or one segment of groups was higher and the other was lower. And there's absolutely no hierarchy of souls. So regardless of how much money you have, how attractive you are, how many possessions you are, what you've accomplished. Um, the, the universe does not see souls. The souls themselves are entirely pure, that we are just light. And then we drop into our personalities and our, um, and we do have soul lessons that we learn from that place, but the, our souls are all equal. We're in fact, our souls are all the same. We're like this little unique piece of giant collective soul, which is the universe or some people call that God. So it doesn't make sense, does it? Like if our souls are all equal and we're all part of oneness, 
then why would it be possible for, say, uh, a man to have more value than a woman or a person of one race to have more value than another and so forth and so on. And right now we're beginning to have this collective understanding breaking of these structures for humans, but also coming along, not yet, but, but in a while, I was going to say soon, I don't think it's soon. Um, it's not just human life. We're just one life form. We're also going to start to have this understanding for animals, for nature, um, for all conscious beings, right? Humans are not the only part of oneness. Everything is part of oneness. So this respect for all souls, the entire oneness, not just human, not just a certain kind of human, that's where we're going. Let's see, we've got on hold, <clears throat> Catherine. Catherine, welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah, thank you. I'm a Hi. first time listener and caller. Ah, yes. Where are you calling from? I'm um, just north of San Francisco. Oh, wonderful. But originally from Ireland, because yes, I don't sound California, I'm sure. <laughs> the, San, the San Francisco <laughs> Irish accent, yeah. So what, what can I help right. you with? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I just missed the early part of your show, but as I'm about to turn 50 next week, um, I guess I feel a lot of, there's like shed, a shedding and a rebooting and a reforming. Um, and I've been guided to leave California and probably head east again. Um, and I'm trying to stay comfortable in all the unknowns that have yet to fall into place. Um, but yeah, I, I, is there a question in there somewhere? <laughs> yeah, so, and where, where, probably hundreds. <laughs> yeah, where are you thinking of um, East? What does East mean to you? Um, well, the funny thing is, all my guidance is telling me is to drive across and to follow the Trail of Tears. And I know a lot of that are places I haven't visited before, um, but my sense is to, uh, maybe upstate New York, which I've never lived in. I did live in Manhattan and Queens um, and upstate New York. I've visited, um, but not, I, I'm, say, Buffalo or Rochester seems to be kind of mm -hmm. popping up. Um. When you're getting your but guidance, it could be anywhere along that journey. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, when you're getting that guidance, what is the time frame? Like, what sense of urgency is there? Um, I'm sensing like end of year and mm -hmm. January of next year. Okay. But allowing for any other possibility, even though the thought of moving is not filling me with joy, but. It's like it, it was just such a strong, yeah, you know, when it's mm -hmm. the direct command, you just go, oh, okay. So um, what I'm receiving, and it's interesting to me because when people usually talk about moving, it's very, it tends to be very immediate. Like if you're sensing it, it's right now or right away, but mm -hmm. um I'm actually sensing like you're a couple months ahead of schedule. It's it's feeling uh, more like it's uh, March March and beyond. So there is some more time to sort of um, stew in what this is all about. Because it's interesting, the Trail of Tears, I actually don't know very much about that, but as a person living in Oregon, like we're always taught in school, the journey of people moving from east to west, like Lewis and Clark and the other explorers, you may or may not know who they are, but there are so many places out here on the west where people arrived at. And it would be mm -hmm. interesting to look at, they didn't just arrive here because they were explorers or pioneers. They were also seeking just like we are 
And it would be interesting to go visit some of those places that were hubs of where people arrived. Probably San Francisco is one of them. And go there and feel the vibe. Like what was it they were seeking? Like connect into those people uh, 100 or 200 years ago. What were they seeking? And just try and like connect into that as if you maybe had a past life there or there's some connection to those ancestors or not maybe not even answers to those past people in past lives just going there and feeling the vibe and attempting to receive what the lesson was when they got there why were they looking what and then because you're actually sort of backtracking the path they were coming west yeah. now you're going east what? so what's that about like why is that such a like who who were you and did you do the the east to west in a past life is that why are you like trying to get in touch with that so you can understand a little bit more about why you're doing this yeah my sense was that it was repair work um mm -hmm. and i haven't checked out yet what ley lines run through it um mm -hmm. but i guess it's that i know the sense of displacement Yes. For first peoples or any people that are refugees throughout the world. And um, yeah, it just seemed important for me to go in the other direction. Yeah. Um, at this time. I think there's two pieces like there's the displaced people. They were not able to go elsewhere. They were just displaced. And then there's also the idea of people who migrated or moved because of no longer being able to stay. Um, there's something about identifying with people um, being separated from the region they were meant to be. And, um, but I certainly would not, like I wouldn't, let go of your place and then do this journey and say i'm going to end up in buffalo i don't see that at all yeah i see you during the journey to maybe mid mid part of the us and then returning and making a new plan i do not think this is just move to east and relocate with a with a stop on the way to trail of tears that's not what this is this is a journey to see what it is, then coming back and then making another choice from there. So I guess don't put too much into, just don't put too much, uh, don't put any outcome on it. I don't okay. see buff. I don't see the Buffalo at all. It's something else happens. So that should be interesting. Okay. And it's, yeah. And it's a little bit later than you think. And there are reasons, uh, some other things need to form before the journey begins. Sounds really fascinating, yeah. really fascinating. So, yeah. Well, hey. yeah, Catherine, thank you. Interesting as ever. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks, Catherine, for calling. Um, we're going to wrap up with a little bit of uh, messages from the divine lesson 32. It's, that's this book. The mystery beckons this idea of the transits and different ages. Um, society tells you you need a map, a map of your life that you're meant to follow without stopping from birth to death, beginning to end. We say, this is the guides, this is society's map. We say in this life of living from soul, you're going to have to throw this map away you're going to have to walk blind. You're going to have to walk without knowing where you're going. You're going to have to let go of all expectation of achievement, measurement of success, all the ways you make progress, excuse me, all the ways you mark progress. The great leap is not into the known, the great leap is into the mystery, the mystery and you, the mystic. 
the mystery and you the soul explorer when you choose to walk toward illumination it's so bright it can be blinding all around you the dimly lit path of the ordinary way the regular way the way society wants you to walk but get up here in the light how can you even see one step ahead of you the light so bright it blinds all the mystery of what's next is a gift to you from the universe so the mystery of what's next is a gift to you from the universe how dull to have it mapped out how dull to follow someone else's society's map um, i want you to consider again this idea of the transits in your we talked about at the beginning of the show um, and just kind of think about how they might apply to your life what part you're going through what you're being called to do, um, letting go of all expectations, whatever society told you, your family or your culture, and just what are you as a soul working through in your own movement towards expansion and understanding? Um, let's see, housekeeping again. We've got the Psychic Claire's project. We've got uh, signups, also, uh, signups for winter 2022. Um, Intuition University, and you'll find all that at sarahwiseman.com. So go there and uh, go ahead and take a look. Thanks everybody for listening and look forward to being with you next week.